Hey, it's Noir Nerd and I wanted to do a uh, follow-up video to the virtual library video I did uh, a couple of days ago. As I said, um, when I made that project tutorial, that it was sort of uh, something that you could build upon. So I wanted to show you how I've been building on the version that I made before, proving things here and there. So this should be quite a fast little code overview video. Uh, without further ado, let's just uh, dive into the project. If you've seen the previous video, if you haven't seen the previous video, then I say probably watch that a bit to get some content perhaps. But anyway, uh, yeah. So the idea is to make it like a virtual library basically in 3D using Play Canvas. That's just the idea I went in with initially for it. Uh, pretty rough and ready, just uh, the idea is that you have a 3D virtual library environment you can scan through books and download them. So we'll talk a bit about obviously I have to be careful of downloading books so just in finding public domain works which I found for this website which I'll talk about in a bit and yeah I mean you just have to ensure that anything that you share in that capacity is obviously public domain or else you can get in trouble for breaking copyright. And intellectual property rights and all that stuff. But anyway, without further ado, let's just explore what I've been doing on the project and what features I've added. So this is how the project's looking now. It's obviously it looks quite similar to what I was before, but I've added some additional features. So let's talk about each one. We've got this download book feature now, which is of uh, a um, so you can download each book that you have a look at, basically. I added a little model from Mixomo just for the librarian. Can obviously add, be added to a lot more. A ch major thing that I changed, in fact, was the way you select books. So I've, made, I've done it on based on the collision system now. So if I go up to one, it basically gets auto selected when you collide with the uh, bounding box instead of clicking, which is. I was running into a lot of issues with that. So basically, it's just like well, if you stand in front of a book. Then you get the description, then you get the title. Uh, also, the other thing is quite a major change is you can now download the books. Um, so I'll, do, I'll demonstrate that in a second. But uh, you can clear the currently selected one of the space, but I think we covered that in the tutorial. I've also started to sort of put each bookshelf into a different category so horror philosophy and science fiction like i said all of these works that i'm including here are public domain because otherwise i could get in a lot of trouble for sharing them i guess uh so we've got the republic here and now you can download it so if i go i need to improve the ui a bit but basically you can just click download and it takes you to the copy of the book which obviously i've just hosted myself uh, it's a PDF copy of the Republic in this case by uh, by Plato. So it just opens it in a new window, but because it was full screen, then it just uh, took me there straight away. And clear place to clear that. Uh, that's about it. I've added some a desk model here just to make it look a bit more alive. And I do obviously need to do a lot more work in that area, but um, in terms of making it look a bit more impressive um i'm just sort of selecting for the actual books i'm including in the library i'm just selecting sort of like classics like obviously frankenstein dracula I mean classic hobbit novels which are also in the public realm so it's okay to share share them and for the same for the philosophical philosophical works got works i personally like like nietzsche the spooks are used um plato the republic Done a bit of things around modifying the text uh, as well to make it fit a bit better. I still need to do some more work around that, but yeah, sort of improved it a bit. Still, though, still a bit janky in some places. Like there, you can see where we've got a long title. It sort of rolls off a bit too much. But anyway, um, I'll show you the website I found for the public domain works as well. Actually, so I used. A website for finding that that was called Project Gutenberg. So you can find a ton of uh, public domain works here if you want to fill your library of your own um, content. So that's quite good. 
it's, yeah, it's just like free ebooks. I'm pretty sure it's okay to uh, download the books that they've created. I think that's the entire point of this project, Project Gutenberg. Um, you can narrow things down. It's got a nice, nice search engine, so you can just search for different types of books. So maybe if you wanted to create your own virtual library, you could base it on... Well, I mean, there's two directions I see you could probably go this. Either collecting interesting works from the public domain or creating your own... Well, you uh, showcasing your own work, your own writing work, or someone you know maybe in that way. Uh, I guess you just have to be careful with uh, copyright and making sure you're not breaking it, but like, I think... If you if you access this site, you can find free like ebooks that you can just reuse and stuff. So that's basically all I did was I just made it so that if I click the download button, it takes me to it. It's like a PDF version of the. It's a, I mean, obviously it's a bit janky. You can see all, all the. I mean, I've just done it as an experiment, really. But uh, you have got the text here. You know, obviously if I was doing this in the real for real thing, I need to reformat a lot of it. But the contents there. Because I just copied this straight from the HTML and convert it into PDF. But um, yeah. So, uh, like I said before, I'm just hosting these files on my own website. So you, probably if you had a, if you were creating this virtual library thing, you'd create your own domain for it and just host the files on there, I guess, somewhere. So yeah. So I guess I'll just cover some of the coding stuff that's changed because like I said I've modified some of the base code that I used initially uh, okay so let's go to root um, so we've got this script called library uh, and we have an initial current book you yeah so because we need to have a URL set up for the downloads initially I just set that here so it's like current book URL set to an empty string. Booked opens I'll probably use later, but I've not actually used that yet, but that's going to sort of be like um, the just a, just some thing in the UI which shows how many books you've opened. The actual download books changed a bit from what I remember. Oh, the download books are completely new actually. So this is basically a script that's attached to the um, this is a script that's attached to the the button that I created for the downloading the book. So just explain what's going on here. So again, we've initialized the um, mouse listening events, uh, and then when it's on, when it's pressed, so when the button's pressed, we um, get the current book URL. And then there's this bit of code here called window open book URL, which opens the you put, um, what a new window in the browser to that specific uh, book URL. So that's how that that's how that functions. It's pretty simple. It's just it's basically how it works. But obviously it's changed a little bit because you know where, how where's the current book URL getting changed? So I'll just have a look into that. So here's, here's where it's changed a little bit more. I mean, you can still do it the other way I was doing it before, but it was just getting a bit, um, I thought it'd be a bit easier just to do this way with collisions. So how it's changed now, obviously I've added a new attribute for the book URL. So it's just a string, it's a new add, and you can add that in the editor so you can add your link to wherever you want to download the book from. And I've added uh, this, uh, show book URL initialize function on entity collision, which basically detects for collision events. Because, like I said, I'm changing the uh, and uh, on contact because I'm changing the um, the way it works for selecting the books instead of clicking with a mouse and having ray casting, which is sort of playing off a little bit sometimes. So I just decided to do it this way instead. It's an alternative way. So you can be, you can do it either way in develop in either ways. I've always, but uh, this is how I've decided to go for now. So, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, so do 
on contact if so we're checking if the rigid body has a tag player because I've added a tag just player to the player um, the player in the game which is so you'd add that where you've got player and then you just add a tag there and see it's got it says player so it checks basically to see it's the player otherwise if it collided with the bookshelf it'd do the same thing so you need to have a check basically in place uh, then, we, then we just do what we did before, so you set the book title to the book title and the content to the book description. The new thing here is this app current book URL, which is the variable we set before in the library uh, script when, it's initial, when it starts off, it sets this book URL, which is this attribute which you've added here. So that then sets the book URL, so that's where we actually set the book URL, that's some of the old code from before, I'm actually commented, just commented out at the minute. But uh, you can see that that's a little bit different. And I think I also added something in first person when we it again. Maybe I didn't, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, just the book space. Just the clearing still, there, that's fine. So, yeah, that's the main stuff that's changed in terms of the actual code. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll leave it at that probably, like that's just a little short video just to showcase how I'm starting to build upon the project and make it a bit more interesting. I'll probably like slowly just build up as this space a bit. Uh, it's not like a huge project for me, it's more just like a side project really that I'm just doing when I have the time and when I feel like it. Um, so I'll probably build up my own library, like I said you can potential ways you could take this project is like building your own library of information on a certain topic, like a very niche thing, uh, or building a general library, like a, just like a public library almost, like in virtual cyberspace, or maybe you want to showcase your own work in an interesting and sort of unique way, so you can obviously utilize it in that sense. If you've not seen the tutorial, like I said, I'm repeating myself a little bit now, but if you've not seen the other tutorial, then look at that as an initial stepping stone for how to create this sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I've been Noah Nerd. Like and subscribe if you like the content. And uh, 